Ciao, Pier Filippo. How are you today? Not too bad. Still at home, but it's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> Ce le faremo. Yes, ce la faremo. So, um, we're talking today, I was speaking with uh, Alice last week, uh, our friend Alice Vifarella, who I spoke to her, yes, about the um, Holy Week in Caltanissetta. And so, the obvious follow-up uh, to talking about that is the Arches of Easter, or Lac di Pasqua. Um, in San Biagio Platini, which I was so fortunate enough to be with you last Easter for. And um, I brought not only the group that we had during Easter, but also another group to see um, later on in the, in the exhibition time. Since it lasts, it's, it's uh, the Arches of Easter is launched, let's say it's the big opening day is on Easter Sunday, but the town of San Biagio Platini, they leave it up for six weeks or so um, after Easter. So now would be the time that the Arches of Easter are on display. So, um, so tell me about your relationship with San Biagio, Biagio Platini and uh, I wanna hear more. Why, why is this uh, close to your heart, this, this uh, feast? Allora, as Italian start, allora. So I live in Sant'Angelo Luxara, there's a very small village, but it's very close to San Biagio Platani, that is a little bit bigger aspect of uh, uh, my village. Um, I'm very close to um, people who stay in that village. First of all, because my son lived there. <laughs> Giuseppe lived in San Biagio Platani, and also you have a lot of friends there. And sometimes for us who live in San Sant'Angelo Muxaro, when we go around, sometimes it's been go to the next side of the river and to drink and to eat something. So for us, actually for both for the two community, going up and down for the two places is very, very easy, very, uh, very popular. Right, because uh, just to give people's perspective, there are two hills basically, and from the hill that Sant'Angelo Muxaro is on, you can see the town of San Biagio Platini across the Platini River Valley. So you, you're, you know, obviously you're going to be curious, but what's over there on that on that hill? <laughs> right. So how many people? How many? How large is the population of San Biagio Platini? Well, San Biagio now, um, I think, is something uh, like uh, 2,500. Right. So it's bigger than Sant'Angelo Muxaro, which is 1,200 people. <laughs> a little bit bigger. And, you know, all the villages inside of Sicily, um, we have the problem of uh, immigration. A lot of people in, in San Biagio, for example, they are working in Germany. Uh, but respect of the uh, emigrated in from Sant'Angelo Muxaro, a lot of people from uh, San Biagio they love to go up and down during the year, um, and most of them they still have a lot of contact, even contact about business with uh, them village. Right. So the people who live in Germany now still come home often, and there's often. Uh, visits and traveling between the two towns and sometimes business yeah. right okay yes. so um so back to the arches of easter tell us about the um the origins of this how old is this feast and how did it start you know, the feast is uh, three centuries old and more or less started in the same period of the um and the foundation of the village. So three centuries ago, the families who received the, the, the license to build the village decided to celebrate uh, Easter in a really special way, uh, building just two arches in front of the main church, which is in the middle of the main road. And two uh, arches um, full of uh, food, which is bread, fruits, oranges, uh, cakes and other kind of uh, materials, eating materials. So the idea three centuries ago was after 
um, the celebration, because actually what they celebrate is the meeting between the uh, Virgin Mother and Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ. After the celebration, as after the procession, the idea was put down everything and uh, offer uh, to the poor, to the family who need some help in the in the village. And this until um, forty years ago, when uh, this they start to realize that maybe to push a little bit the economy. Of, of the village, uh, they must, must think about something different, and they decide to transform uh, the, the the celebration in also in a uh, touristic attraction. And what's happened was they start to build the other uh, construction of after the main two arches, and and now the construction arrived to. Um, to be sometime even three and four hundred meters from the main roads. And uh, we have two different uh, organizations, two different uh, brotherhoods uh, who manage the two parts. One take care about the uh, Madunara, it means the, the part to take care about the, about the, the Madonna, uh, part of the other ones about the Signorara. Uh, which is the part to take care about um, the Jesus Christ part. It's like a competition, actually, but there's not the end and the winner. There's no, um, for them, it's really important to be better than the other ones. And, but there's no, at the end, any, any winner. But they are really close to the uh, two brotherhoods. So if somebody um, was born in a family who take part in, a, in one of the two sides, there's no way to move to the other ones. Okay, so, so let, let me ask a couple of questions. So, um, so when they started this town three centuries ago, the main industry and economy of the town was agriculture. And I imagine <laughs> still is, correct? Yes. Uh, what, are the two, what, are the, or what are the crops that they, they are focused on in San Biagio? Well, actually, they have, uh, uh, it's one of the main places in this area of Agrigento for the pistachio. Um, and uh, the difference between the other really famous area of Brown that they hear is a family management. So there's no big, big uh, land and big, big production. It's mean also that you have a really high quality of pistachio. In my opinion, not because I come from this area, it's maybe the best pistachio we have in Sicily because uh, if you produce in a small quantity, maybe you take, can take care much better in respect of uh, um, places who plant a thousand, thousand plants. Right, so but have, also in addition to pistachio, wheat as well is very important, correct? Yeah, wheat also is, a, is about um, 10 years that a lot of producers are going back to plant uh, ancient wheat. So we have, uh, well, in Sicily, we have more than 60 different kinds of uh, uh, old uh, grains, wheat. Uh, now maybe they are using 15, 16 of this, like uh, Tuminia, Speciosacchi, Senatore Capelli, um, so are, I think Rosella is one, right? Rosella as well. Mm -hmm. so, so the point of I'm bringing this up is because wheat is very important to the town in terms of its uh, economic success and economic force. So when they established the Archidipane, or the arches of bre the bread arches, which is the other name is the arches of, for the arches of Easter, um, having this... Uh, display of bread and baking bread and sharing bread was part of the showing the wealth and the accomplishment of the people of the town. So um, that was part of the, the effort that was made on Easter. And also the, um, the fact that spring is coming and spring has arrived, right? That's also part of the 
Well, in, uh, in Sicily, the, there is an important, a really important connection between Eastern and the bread. Even in other places of Sicily, uh, we celebrate Easter in using a lot of bread, like salami, uh, but in everywhere in Sicily, we do a particular kind of cake that we call cannellare. It's like just a bread. Uh, in the past, it was a regular bread, not sweet bread. With the egg in the middle, and the idea uh, was just to have together um, full lunch, bread and egg. So if you take away, uh, if you work in a countryside, for example, just in one um, thing together, uh, just in one thing, you have uh, uh, the lunch. The loaf, bread. the loaf of bread with the egg baked into the the loaf. Yes. Yes, Italian Americans do this too for Easter. This is something that Italian Americans brought with them that tradition. Yeah. Um so so bread is such a central focus of this feast in terms of how they decorate the the arches and um I'm just going to bring up another photo here of of uh to get a sense of it and you can see the you were talking about from this photo i have up you can see the the 300 to 400 meters where where i took this photo was literally standing in front of the church to show the, the amount of people that we were part of this thing on easter sunday um and then you uh you were talking about you can see here um that in the arch the this is the the jesus side the, the risen Christ side. Um, yeah, and they use the red. Right, this is all bread here, right? There's glazed bread, yeah. that's the white, and then behind it are the, the, the round loaves that uh, are very traditional. What are those called, those round loaves? Um, they call this um, uh, like a cake, the white one. They call marmurade. The marmorata is like a bread, sweet bread with some eggs on top, just the white of the egg on top. Right, the egg uh, white. That's how they make that. Great. Yeah, as, so maybe you can see they try to represent uh, uh, angels or plants, flowers, um, churches, other things. Mm -hmm. so this is a thing. Yes, the, blue one, the blue one is the part of uh, the color of the. Um, Virgin Mary. Right. And the red one about the, the, the Jesus Christ. Right. Uh, so here's the statue of Mary. And um, I have a really beautiful picture of a particular of kind of uh, statue because they can, uh, she moved the, the, the hands and. Right. So and it's grace. Right, yes. Right, because this is the what you were saying on Easter Sunday. What happens is that they embrace. Uh, that's the moment, the big moment of Easter Sunday is when when the two embrace. Now, I think also important to point out is that Jesus has in his hand wheat. Yes, it's the new one. Of course, in April it's still green, and so the must wait one month, sometimes one month and a half to be ready. So it's just to celebrate the day. So this is the moment they celebrate. Actually, we have uh, uh, two different procession because we have a procession with Jesus Christ and the procession with the Madonna. They meet each other, but the first meeting is not still a fest because the Madonna still have a black man. And then there's an angel that touched them the black man, they became a face, they meet each other, and they process and start together. Right, so here's the, the video that you made last year. Yeah. You can see them coming together. And here are some of the, the panels. Here's Jesus being brought in. The guys with the, the red clothes are the supporter of the Jesus Christ part, and with the blue one is the, oh, the support of the Madonna.
Okay, great. So, um, so let's see if I can find. So you were saying about the, the two different sides. Um, here's some of the artwork again. Here we go. So here, talk about the two different brotherhoods and, and, and the sort of culture of this. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have uh, two different brotherhoods, you say, and of course we have uh, two artists that take care about the organization. In one of the part, which is the Madonna Brotherhood, we have uh, Carmelo Navarra, is an artist, a local artist, is a painter, but it also works in uh, ceramics and other things. And um, in the other part, we have an architect, which is Alessandro, uh, they of course help them to 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 organize everything. They start already um, for the first meetings in January, and sometimes just the two artists, which is Carmelo and Alessandro, to trying to realize what kind of uh, uh, designer or other things they want to um, they want to try, because everything changes every year, so they don't use nothing for the last year. They have to change everything. And so, so in January, a part, a few days of our organization, they start already to, to work um, in uh, some places that we call Magazzini. Magazzini, which is also some basement of the normal houses. So they are just the family um, give the possibility to the organization to use this kind of store to uh to work and to to to, to organize uh, everything so inside uh, every single um uh, brotherhoods we have uh, another small groups who take care about the bread who take care about the canes who take care about uh, mosaics by cereals uh, so sometimes every single small group they don't know nothing about what is going on the last days on the square. They had just the task to realize some mosaics, and so though they don't know what's going on uh, about the bread. So and even within their own brotherhood, there are different teams, and one team might not know what the other team is doing. Exactly. When and it's I'm, all very secretive. Between the two sides, it's very secretive, right? Well, in general, they try to keep everything a secret until the last 10 days, two weeks and so trying to imagine they don't want to uh, show to nobody what they are doing um, because uh, they don't want to that the other part of realize what kind of material they are using and for them it's really important to keep secrets sometimes it's also they don't want any journalists to do photo or, or other things because they don't want to show uh, what's going on And until uh, the last uh, the last week, they try to keep secrets. Uh, so even when we go at the backstage during the week before Easter, because we used to organize a, a kind of visit like this, sometimes we love to get our guests the backstage to show them what's going on in every single place. Uh, they ask as to if you want you can do some photo but please don't use on facebook or other kind of uh, uh, social network because uh, for us it's really important to keep secret until the last days until actually the last week when they start to put everything in the square and they work a really hard for 10 days one week to both of the two brotherhoods to, to, to organize uh, all the decorations. So, um, yeah, so that's one of the things that's very cool about what when we get to come during this period is that you take us to backstage, as you're saying, we, you get the insider view of how this works. So, um, so there are different elements, right? I mean, obviously I'm showing sort of pictures of all of these materials that they use to make this artwork, it comes from nature. It comes from yeah. the natural world. Yeah, everything comes from uh, the natural, which is uh, the main structure of by canes. And sometimes they use canes from different years to have uh, different colors. 
other kind of uh, natural um, trees uh, like uh, olives or are you say salice before weeping willow trees weeping willow trees yes <laughs> That's not really easy. Anyway, and... No, not easy. What is it in Italian? Salice. Salice piangente. Piangente. It's right. Yeah. Salice piangente. Piangente. Sweeping willows, right. And also, you can see the light in the middle. Yes, this light here, the chandelier that's hanging there. Talk so about that. They call nymphe. 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 Like nymphs. Nymphs. So try to imagine that there are just a, a group that take care about that. Um, even if they need uh, hands from other groups because they need somebody who do the flower like this. This is pasta. This is incredible. It's ziti. <laughs> it's amazing to me. We call uh, conchiglioni, a particular kind of pasta. And, and then we have uh, other kind of beans. Um, and dates too, right? There are some dates that are right. used, and from yeah. the from and we the palm use, trees, uh, maize. So um, right, there's a corn. Yes, corn. Mm -hmm. These are palms. What else? I have a couple other photos. I have so many amazing pictures of this. Um, so, so the chandeliers are a whole team of people make chandeliers. So, actually, one of the things that you told me about was this beautiful video. Maybe we'll play a little bit of this to show how, what it looks like at night. So you can visit at night. Uh, well, actually, was uh, close to the sunrise. Uh, I think it was uh, more or less uh, 5, 5.30 in uh, April last year. My friend Ignazio loved to do a video like this. He's a video maker from Santa Elisabetta. And uh, he was looking for a moment where mm, nobody was there. And look, it's amazing. It's amazing. Look at it all lit up. It's absolutely beautiful. Yes. And to see it at when night. It the night is uh, incredible. So this is the main road. This is the Corso Umberto I. And uh, of course, uh, uh, in the middle, we have the main church. And we have right and left the two um, development of the arches. This is the main church. Uh, well, during the night is also a really interesting moment to visit because uh, change everything with the light, change everything. So sometimes when we have a guest that is, stay around in the, our place in like a Gran Turismo hotel, we suggest to go one day in the morning and one day in the night. Could be a good excuse to have a dinner or just to take an ice cream or cannolo in a place uh, in the main square. They have a good cannoli with ricotta. Well, in San Biagio Plata, there is one of the main uh, producers of uh, ricotta cream. They arrive also in in the U.S. You yes. know better than me. <laughs> well, as I know, because on the cannoli crawl, <laughs> yes. uh, you know, one of the places that I take my clients for the cannoli crawl in New York City is, is uh, we have ricotta from San Biagio Platini and I love talking yeah. about it. Yeah, the company is a spericotta from my friends uh, Gino and he's also ready to uh, to organize with us uh, a visit uh, uh, with your guest uh, and then it could be uh, nice that what you organize in New York, maybe when you arrived here, we can get our guest to visit the place where the ricotta come from. Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. And there's a lot of people who do the cannoli crawl and then come with me to Sicily and vice versa. Um, well, this is a special moment because, you know, we have the problem with the virus, virus and um, I don't know what's going on now. But usually in this period, uh, Spericot manage something like 12,000 liter of milk per day. Right, because this is the this is the high season for ricotta. This is the best time to have cannoli <laughs> in Sicily. Is the this spring. Is, uh, also, what is a really interesting that even in August you can have a good cannoli if you produce the ricotta in this period. You can put in a freezer for three or four months. Right. Uh, if you put sugar, you can put in a freezer. 
Right. right. That's the preservative. How you preserve it is with the sugar and and that's how they do it. They put the sugar in actually before they ship it to New York. They sh they put the sugar in and then and yes. then and then deep uh, flash fruit freeze it and then we get it in New York. Yeah, with the special containers arrive to New York already frozen. Right. And so all the more reason to come. I was talking with Liche that uh, I would love to have a tour and my plan is to do it next year, but perhaps it has to be in 2022, we'll see, um, to have a, an Easter week tour and we'll come to San Biagio for the, the Arches of Easter as well. And, um, and on Easter Sunday, I think actually we will go to Patti, which is another town in the Sakani region where you, is your homeland and uh, we'll see the the events there because the Easter Sunday uh, events there are pretty interesting and then we'll visit the Arches of Easter it'll be a fantastic trip and we'll have to have the cannoli and have this ricotta visit <laughs> for sure yes so um one of the things that I just don't want to stop uh, before we end the conversation I want to really talk about um what what for me, the takeaway of this whole event is really how it's a community effort and it really brings people. So even if you have these two brotherhoods, the, the, the Madonna side and the Jesus side of town, right? And the, the fact that they work together in, in teams, even though there's a friendly competition between, between, between the sides, but each side they're working on this from January to Easter every night, right? They all are getting together in different teams. Talk about that a little bit because I think that is for me the most exciting part about this is the community that's built behind these two. Um, I think it's one of the most important um, thing about the fest, in my opinion. Maybe nobody. Um, can realize how it's important what's going on from January to the night before of Easter. But try to imagine that our community spend every single night together in different places, working together, trying to imagine some places there are long table with um, people from three or four years old until 90. So three or four generations that work together. Uh, and they, the young ones stay there because there's their mother. And the mother stay there because the the grandmother, and the grandmother is doing something that maybe the mother transmit to them. So it's something that go on for generation and generation. Right. So what's really important now that we was very close to lots the, um, the 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 face the feast a few years ago, and now is still on because the young one decide all together to. Um, uh, dedicate uh, again time to um, protect the, the 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 celebration, the organization. So now, in every single place where you go to visit the organization, the young one, young one, they don't want to lose the feast. It's really important because if you think and talk around in Sicily about mm -hmm. San Biagio Platani, it's I mean the place of uh, uh, Eastern Arch is the main feast we have in Sicily, take one month and a half. So trying to imagine that sometime uh, when we have a, a really good organization, touch something like 80,000 people who come here as a visitors. Right, until, around the six uh, weeks. Until right. a few years ago it was just a local visitors, Sicilian visitors, we used to come here just for Sunday or for the weekend and also during the week, uh, schools, other things. Now it's about six or four years, there are a lot of tour operators like you, they realize that if you come in Sicily in that period, you can lose a so important appointment. And- uh, No, it's you know, a fascinating event to see and the symbolism behind all the breads and, and the work and the craftsmanship that goes into this, it's just so exciting to see and so unique. So I love sharing this with my, my clients. It's, um, it's just absolutely unique. And then to have somebody like you who is so, um, you're such an insider with the community there, it makes it so special as well. 
So, um, well, for us, it's like the same community, the other village, San Biagio Plata. That's why, even in San Biagio, maybe you know that we start to um, this year to have also some family dinner, even in San Biagio, and it's working very well. And uh, I uh, I think they're gonna push a little bit more because it's a really interesting community, really open. Well, I look forward to coming back and seeing you and bringing some of our experienced Sicily guests, of course, to see you. Everyone <laughs> raves about how awesome it is to spend the day with you so and all the things that they do with you. So I look forward to the next time I can be there. Not soon enough. <laughs> so. Actually, I don't know what's going on this year because I, I'm not really sure they, they don't do any more for the, this year, the arts. Maybe uh, uh, in autumn or maybe in November could be um, interesting to do something because they, after the work, after the works like the main structures and other things like uh, the bamboo, the, the, the canes, the other things, was already ready. So now they have to finish the mosaics, other things. So it, I mm -hmm. think uh, they need uh, two, three more weeks to finish everything. So maybe it could be the chance to see the arch in a completely different period. But this is especially here, so everything can happen. Anything can happen, right. Let's hope. Let's hope that, uh, that we can enjoy it in the fall. That would be great. Um, I will have a, a couple of tours. If it's all possible to travel, I will be bringing people for sure. I know um, just from reading what I've been reading here, people are anxious to travel. They really want to get out there. So um, just like Rorita, your sister, I saw her post today on Facebook and she said, I can't wait to travel. So people who love to travel are very excited to to do it when they also the because what, what is going on you know, in, uh, in the south of Italy the situation is very safe with respect of the north maybe uh, if uh, we start to travel if uh, we can back to travel uh, Sicily could be one of the, the first destination uh, because the, we don't have a lot of problem here right it's also now it's about 40 days they are still at home and we want to arrive at, at the beginning of May in a safe situation, but until now it's okay. Yes, well, that's the good news. It's, uh, it's gonna be safe to be there for sure. Let's hope that people are attracted to Sicily because they know that it has something to offer them and it's gonna be a easy place to travel. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about the Archi di Pane, the Archi di Pasqua. This is, um, I really hope that I can be back uh, in Sicily with you to see this again very soon. So, my pleasure. Okay. Grazie mille. See you in Sicily as okay. soon as possible. See you in Sicily. Ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao, ciao.